Now, our understanding of fossils at the present day is, as you, I hope you've seen, quite sophisticated. We can do important things with fossils. But in the past, the understanding of fossils was much less exact. In the early part of the 18th century, uh, Johannes Beringer was the Dean of Medicine at the German University of Würzburg, very interested in fossils, and he had three boys collect fossils for him. And eventually he published a monograph. But unbeknown to him, the fossils that the boys were collecting were fossils that had been carved by some of his colleagues, by the professor of geography and mathematics, aided by the university librarian and one of the local barons. Apparently they wanted to demonstrate Beringer's gullibility and they decided that they would hoax him. Even after they admitted the hoax, uh, Beringer refused to believe that he had in fact been fooled and he went ahead with his monograph anyway. Eventually he was convinced when one of the fossils that was brought to him had his own name in Hebrew on it. The fossils that Beringer illustrated in his monograph are indeed an exotic collection. Eventually, when Beringer realized that he'd been hoaxed and his monograph had already been published, he tried to buy back the original copies and burn them. But he didn't succeed, and some survive. And I can quote to you what Beringer wrote. I doubt that any more heartwarming spectacle can come to the eye of a scholar of natural science, for all these figures are not merely outlined or sketched, but stand out so boldly after the manner of sculptured relief that many erudite scholars and illustrious men of letters could not refrain from suspecting that some imposture lay hidden beneath these extraordinary mysteries, that the stones were fictitious and were fabricated in secret for the purposes of fraudulent avarice. Let's look at some of those fossils that Beringer realized too late were frauds. Some of them, such as these shells, do bear some kind of resemblance to what might be expected of fossils, although the baby in the top left is rather odd. On the other hand, some of the others, such as these lizards, begin to look a little, a little inventive. This lobster is quite formidable. And the bee about to alight on the flower in the top of the screen is very imaginative. The soft parts of snails and spiders webs begin to look just too good to be true. Two insects getting together and two frogs. And quite a party of reptiles and lobsters and the sun and the moon and comets. <laughs>